Hello everyone. I'm starting up just about a minute or two early. I always find that that's a good way to let people go get a glass of ice water or a cup of tea. I see at one o'clock you guys have probably finished lunch or maybe you're having lunch with me. So at, uh, what is it? It's not quite one o'clock yet. I'll let a few people join in. Oh, hey Beth B. Lot, is that Beth joining in? Yes, it is. All right, I think Beth that you're gonna like what I'm doing today. Um, it's almost a little bit like, you know, some of the talks that you have with all of us in our workout sessions because we don't just work out, although we work out like crazy and and we love it because you always make it fun and different and we sing to the music you're playing and we laugh um, but also uh, we also talk about you know the people we are the people we become and you know how we treat others and so we do a lot of talk in that realm and of course Beth is joining us from I don't know the name of the town that you're uh, mountains are in but they bought this property uh, like a few mountains I think and they built and when I say they built a, a log cabin but when you think of a log cabin <laughs> a home that is built though like a log cabin and I mean Beth is like a you know a, she can do anything and they cut down trees and she used this thing and took the bark off the trees and they made the wood it was crazy uh hi elise calling from uh calling that's that really kind of shows my age doesn't it calling in from uh checking in digitally from larchmont vic overholt hey vic so vic is uh my cousin uh his mom was my dad's sister so he grew up in my area the, i think he was in roseville i was in fair oaks california by the way a bunch of you earlier this week were all from roseville and fair oaks which was really cool um and here is uh, sue jeffries from naples florida pam uh, and thank you sue because you're always with us here barbara johnson from davidson north carolina uh, and Pam, where are you from, Pam Fields? From uh, Morrisville, Indiana. Uh, Kathy, you're coming to us from Ohio. Let me come over here. Hey, Debbie Bergenfeld. Uh, all right, and, uh, and Sue Curran. Hi, Sue, up there in Maine. Uh, Jeanette Persons uh, from Lisbon, North Dakota. Uh, we have somebody else from, uh, oh, Linda. Hi, Linda, from Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, Sarah Lynn Spires, uh, it, yeah, raining in Wyndham. Okay, so here's the deal. And I'll say hi to more of you in just a little bit, but a whole bunch of you joined at one time. I decided to come to you today from, this is actually from my bedroom, to be very honest. I, I can't do this downstairs because my kids are studying in the dining room. If I come from the kitchen or the family room down there, I kind of bother them. I'm so happy that they've chosen the dining room as their school and that they're all down there studying. Um, but it's a rainy day here in Southern Connecticut. Like it's been pouring. It's subsided right now. I'm not hearing anything. But during this, you may really, it's been coming down like in buckets. So it's kind of that day to, I don't know, just kind of cuddle up with a good book or a jigsaw puzzle, and you know, you guys know I'm into jigsaw puzzles. In fact, I bought um, eight of them. I posted it one day, and some of you said, are those pizza boxes? God forbid if those have been pizza box boxes. But here's what I have left. Four, you can see they're all still in their wrapper, and these are the ones that I've finished. So I just finished one also. Um, but while I was looking around, uh, remember, you know, I've been showing you guys all the pictures and, uh, from my career and I found some, some of those things that your children make for you that you save. Um, oh wait, hey Susan, you're with us today from Tel Aviv. Woohoo. And you guys always watch while you're having dinner because of the time difference, but I'm so happy that you 
join us so regularly from Tel Aviv, and especially now this is a second day of Passover over there in Tel Aviv here too. So many people did Zoom seders last night. Uh, I don't know what's happening. Maybe you can give us a sense of what's happening over where you are. Um, so anyway, I've been searching through things. Uh, I found a whole lot of things that that you save that your children make for you. Maybe you have some things made out of popsicle sticks or ceramics like this, like this mug that has no handle. <laughs> I've never tried drinking out of it, but it makes a great pencil holder. And I found this collection of books by my daughter, Sarah. Sea creatures, horses. All my daughters rode horses, put me in the poorhouse. Um, or of course, my most favorite, my mom is extremely nice. <laughs> Love that title. Love that title. So do you guys have some of these things around your house? You know, that your, your children made that you just can't throw away? Like I'm never throwing that away. Um, a lot of you have asked me to do a reading from my new book. Um, and I'm going to do that today. But if we get enough time, I'll read you a little something out of my mom is extremely nice. It's kind of interesting to go back and hear how your children portrayed you as a person, um, which kind of brings us to uh, where we are today, which is, uh, that's kind of what the chapter is I'm gonna read from is talking about. So I reached out, shameless plug, why did I come to this room? A few of you have asked um, in your comments yesterday, where do you get it? I mean, obviously we can't go to bookstores right now, but you can get it. Uh, you can go to joanlondonbook.com. That's a that's Premier Books, I think, that sends those out. They have uh, autographed ones as well, and they're shipping. I think Barnes & Noble, is. They, they seem to be shipping based on what I'm hearing from all you guys that are getting your books at home. Um, but anywhere, Target, you know, they're sold online everywhere. Um, or, and of course, you can also get the Kindle or the audio version, because I did read the whole book into an audio book. Um, so in deciding today what I'm going to read, I asked the ladies who work with me and um, I heard from Nicole, who is my uh, personal assistant, who is an ace personal assistant. They call them personal assistant, but they really are your life manager. Um, so, and I think she said she thought I should read from either decline to decline. And that is, that's a very informational chapter, uh, or chapter one, which is all about age and the concept of age and, and a trip to Morocco that I took my children on. And I'll do that one day. But of course I, I, I said, I'm going to surprise you all. Um, so I'll just, first of all, I'll give you the chapter titles and if you've got the book and you're reading the book and you want me and you say oh I wish you would have read from blah 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 chapter just tell me right over there and I shall see your request and I'll do it so chapter one is how old would you be if you didn't know how old you are and they say that everyone has a number in their head my number is 45 like when I look in the mirror or I think about myself just as a person they say you have to have a number and that some people I guess could think of themselves as they age they are but that's not normal and they say if you're over 50 that number is usually 10 years younger than whatever you are I think I got off the age train at 45 because I've always thought of myself as 45 years old um, <clears throat> and so that whole chapter is about the concept of age and how it sometimes can trap us into not really um, feeling like life is still our oyster. Um, six sure signs I'm aging. Now that I think of it, that would have been a really funny chapter to read. I'll have to do that one day. I'll read some from that. Uh, old age, are we there yet? From the sandwich generation, chapter four, strollers, cars, and wheelchairs. And I was buying all three of those at the same time. Uh, chapter five, I'm not old. I'm 45 plus shipping and handling. What's your age? You can tell me. You can leave a comment and tell me how old. Of course, 
I won't know how old you really are unless you, I mean, it's just between you and me. Um, not only is my short-term memory bad, so is my short-term memory. <laughs> Obviously that one's on our brain um, and how it functions and what we can do to make it function better. Um, why uh, can't I lose weight like I lose my keys, my phone, and my sex drive? <laughs> um, strong is the new skinny. I like this one because um, I think it's... Uh, Okay, I'm just putting a little thing out to my office. Um, I don't want us to continue to have this goal that we're all supposed to be skinny. That's not the point. And I think you start to understand that better as you start to get older. The point is to be in control of your health and resilient and positive. Those are the things I think are, are so important as we move forward. Um, what's the next one? Become the CEO of your own health. Boy, that's important. That's even more important also, I think, as we get older. Uh, think like a doctor. And of course, my dad was a doctor. Um, and I kind of talk a little bit about him in that chapter. Uh, a heart uh, to heart about your heart. I've always done so much work with the American Heart Association. Um, it's one of my ways of giving back and my mom uh, had a few heart attacks uh, so uh, keep moving it's harder for the undertaker to catch up with you I just thought that was so much more fun than let's talk about exercise but this is all about what actually happens in your body when you exercise uh, and most importantly what it does to your brain uh, <laughs> the next one is we're basically a house plant except with more complicated emotions, why we need so much water every day. Um, and it's, I, I was really astonished. I think at the beginning of this chapter, it says I, I was astonished to find out that people can go for like two weeks without food, but they can't go more than 72 hours without water. Now, what I found astonishing about that is that anyone be, would be able to go without food for two weeks. Really? I don't know. Um, all right, the next one. Sometimes I laugh so hard, tears run down my leg. <laughs> like, isn't that better than urinary incontinence? But it is one of the aspects of growing older as a woman. Um, all right, hey, Sue Jeffries, you're 75, but you think you feel like you're 39. Ah, put it there, Sue. I love that. I love that. Um, all right, the next one, Sleeping Beauty was on to something. And in this, I talk about how important sleep is and what all the things um, that are happening in our body and in our brain while we're sleeping. So if we're not getting enough sleep, then all those good things aren't happening. Um, <laughs> the next one is, do you know chocolate makes your clothes shrink? <laughs> yeah, uh, that was, of course, about exercise. Um, Oh, so then the part, the third part of the book is about your soul, things that happen in our soul. Um, and the first chapter in that part is, will it really matter in five years? How many times have you gotten all upset about something and played into it? And then, I mean, just stop and think, will it really matter in five years? Because if not, let it go. Uh, which, of course, is another chapter. Mistakes and regrets, it's time to let them go. So this chapter is on stress because stress is something you can't see. Like it happens to you, but you can't visually see it. So I decided to do an exercise where we could see it. And it's life would be easier with pinatas placed throughout the day. Seriously though, stress comes up, you're in traffic, you got up late, your alarm didn't go off, your coffee machine didn't go off. And so all of a sudden, what, what, wouldn't it be great if we had a pinata there? You could just whack it, all that would fall out, and whew, you could just go on until the next pinata. Um, when there are lumps in the road, of course, I had the, the real lumps, the lumps in my breast, but the, your lumps could come in any form and how not to get re, derailed. Um, decline to decline, and this is a, 
it's a good chapter and it's, and I like it too. It definitely won um, in my office. Uh, everybody said read decline to decline and you're all brilliant, but I decided to do something different. Uh, Jan Lynn Adams, you are 64, but you always think of yourself as 40. All right, so that's good. Um, I love that. 40 is a good age. Don't ever anybody, like don't freak out when you're 40. 40 was 40, 45, that was my, oh, those were probably my favorite, favorite years. They were awesome. Um, and I talk about that too in the book, but um, here's an, an attitude of gratitude. Reminds me of my mom. Uh, friends, the, I talk about the importance of friends, but the chapter title is Friends are therapists you can drink with. <laughs> but friends are so important, especially as we get older. Um, this one really reminds me of my mom. Be happy. It drives people crazy. Whenever I would get in like a little tiff with a friend or something, she'd say, oh, um, kill them with kindness. Nothing will annoy them more. That was my, that was glitzy gladdy. And maybe my favorite chapter title, I want to be cremate, cremated. It's my last chance for a smoking hot body. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to do, I'm gonna read from chapter 24, which is be the person you want to have lunch with. All right, so we're gonna talk about what kind of person, and I'm gonna have some exercises in here, okay? So as I go along, give me your thoughts, you, and see what I'm gonna see what how you guys answer some of these questions. Linda Thomas loves the idea of a mental age. Um, she may not have a specific age, but definitely in her 40s. I think a lot of us women, I mean, let's look, look you know the saying 60 is the new 40. And when I get to 70, and I won't say how soon that will be, but it's kind of soon, like, how can I, I'm gonna be 70? Really? I remember my mom always used to say, somebody must have been like drunk or something the day that they filled out my birth certificate because I cannot be that age. It's just, it's a mistake. And I always think how she was so right, you know? All right, so you guys are gonna, I'm gonna do a reading, all right? But as I do this reading, I've got some exercises in this chapter, so I want you to think about them because we have all the time on our hands right now to think about them, all right? And I start every chapter with a quote uh, by some woman that we all, you know, look, know, and maybe an actress or, you know, a great politician. <clears throat> this one's by Susan Sarandon. I look forward to being older when what you look like becomes less an issue and what you are is the point. It's a good one, isn't it? As I've grown older, I've found that I've become much more contemplative. And I consider that a good thing. It also means that for the first time in my life, I've slowed down enough to even have the time to think that way. What has probably surprised me the most is that I'm, I'm not just always reminiscing about my many travels or accomplishments or awards, but rather I'm thinking about how I have conducted my life and about the person that I've become. This kind of self introspection can really stop you in your tracks. It forces you to take an inventory of your attributes and of course, your annoying traits as well. I'm sure my teenagers, if they were listening right now, would run in here and give you a list of a few of those. Think about all the times you've sat around with your friends and talked about other people who weren't there. Sure, you said, she's so nice and thoughtful about some, but just as likely you've said, or maybe you've just thought, I'm glad she's not here. She's always such a gossip or she's so stuck up and full of herself. All right. So now imagine your friends sitting around chatting about you. Oh yes, they definitely talk about you sometimes too. What phrases do you suspect they're using when the discussion turns to your personality? 
To help you out on this one, answer the following question. All right, you guys ready for this? If we were all forced to wear a warning label, what would yours say? Kind, good listener, quiet, funny, a prankster, loyal, easy to be around, alpha female, interrupter, social climber, gossiper, self-obsessed, or maybe Dabby Downer. Okay, so I know what I have to do next. I have to paint some adjectives on my sign. All right, so here goes. Good conversationalists. I know, that could easily mean talks too much. Always listens and adds to a conversation. I know, that can be an interrupter. Always perky. I know, this drives some people crazy. Easy to be around? A pleaser. But seriously, am I fun to be with? Am I a good conversationalist? Or do I cut people off? My husband might want to answer that last one. Sorry, honey, I'm going to work on that. Have I always been there for my family and friends? Have I extended myself sufficiently when people needed something? Have I always been kind enough, compassionate enough, understanding enough? Would people say that I have been a fair and generous person? Have I indulged in gossip? These are tough but necessary and enlightening questions to ask ourselves. French proverb, there is no pillow so soft as a clean conscience. All right, your turn. I'll go on, now you try. If someone were to talk with me about you over lunch, how would they characterize you? How do you wish they would describe you? I think this is an important and helpful exercise for all of us to do. In fact, I wrote this chapter so that I would have to contemplate this exercise too. Making the list of what people might say was kind of intense. Making a list of what I'd like for them to say was a little easier. The really tough part was contemplating what I would like to change about myself as I move forward, because of course that is the ultimate goal of this exercise. Um, you cannot rewrite yesterday's news, but you can influence what you read tomorrow morning. All right, so I'm gonna start off. Let me start with what I would like to change about myself. All right, all right. if you're taking a sip of something, put the cup down, because I don't want you to spit it out. <laughs> are, are you ready for it? I would like to consciously talk less and listen more. Okay, I'll let you recover from your laughter. <laughs> um, I know, I know, but I am serious. I've made my living talking and talking and asking questions. It should be easy, right? But it's actually not. Remaining quiet. When I've collected so many interesting stories over the years, sometimes feels impossible. God knows I have a lot of really good stories, but that doesn't mean that I need to share them all the time. Oh, sure. I'm a good guest at a cocktail party, but I'm feeling like I want to back it down and simply be a good listener. Who knows what new stories I might add to my repertoire. Oh, Marty, Marty Cullum says she's funny, but it can also be a Debbie Downer. Carol Shapiro says her kid's adjective for her is clutch. <laughs> 
Okay, but I want you to decide what's your adjective, okay? Um, being present and hearing other people be interesting is an adventure of its own. Of course, talking less and listening more could be a tough goal for me since I seem to like to hear myself talk, LOL. But I'm trying, just not now, just not these days during this time at 1 p.m. But I love this, listen to this. God gave us two eyes, two ears, and only one mouth, and we should use them in that ratio. As for the attributes that I'd like to be known for, and by extension, those I should strive harder to achieve, here goes. I would hope that my friends and family would describe me as a kind, thoughtful, considerate, and generous person. I also wouldn't mind being described as fun and funny. What the heck, a girl can dream. I hope that my children would describe me as a loving and understanding mom. That all depends on the day, I think who is fair and is always there to help and guide them. By the way, for the record, I'd also like my children to, just, to describe me as calm and patient, but I'm guessing that one may require a little bit more work on my part. Um, Joanne, and Joanne Agriesto, she says she tends to be a micromanager of her family. Are you like, FaceTiming with them all the time now. Um, Ula Atwa uh, is brutally honest, but finds that she probably annoys people when she does that. Um, all right, so as a professional, I would hope to be described as a loyal, hard worker who is always kind to my colleagues and is someone who is principled and honest in my work as a journalist. It's important to me that those who look to me to re represent their company or their message or their network, feel that I've given them my all. As a person, I would hope that I would be described as someone who led my life with grace, dignity, and honor. I'd like to be remembered as someone who rose to impressive heights, but remained down to earth. Oh, I'm being told I'm 25 minutes in. Um, I'm finally, and finally, I would hope that the lady up above would judge me, oops, I mean describe me, as someone who was compassionate and who strove to inspire and advocate, advocate for others. I sure hope she knows that I'm someone who has gratitude for the wonderful life I have lived. Now, you guys, I'm going to end with some quotes. You've probably noticed that I love quotes. So listen to these. Be so busy improving your life that you have no time to criticize others. Be somebody who makes everybody feel like a somebody. Listen to others with the intent to understand, not with the intent to reply. Character is how you treat those who can do nothing for you. Be the woman that fixes another woman's crown without telling the world that it was crooked. Don't compare your life to others. There's no comparison between the sun and the moon. They shine when it's their time. Everybody has a chapter that they don't read aloud. Don't forget that you're human and it's okay to have a meltdown. Just don't unpack and live there. Don't burn bridges. You'll be surprised how many times you have to cross the same river. A head full of fears has no space for dreams. Don't focus on how stressed you are. Focus on how blessed you are. Your vibe attracts your tribe. And yes, I see some of you guys are giving me your favorite quotes. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. I can share them on another day. Stay away from negative people. They have a problem for every solution. The less you respond to negative people, the more peaceful your life will become. And 
happiness held is the seed, but happiness shared is the flower. Each new day is another chance to change your life. This isn't the end of this chapter, but I'll continue it another day because I know I am almost a half an hour in, but I'll end with a wonderful quote from Maya Angelou. They may forget your name, but they will never forget how you made them feel. All right, so I think I've given you a little, just maybe a little bit of inspiration and a little motivation for today to be introspective. We have a lot of time on our hands right now to be introspective. And if you do some of the exercises I talked about today, I just found that for me, it helped me understand what I wanted to do in my life going forward so that I would be that person that I always wanted to be and that be that person that I want to be remembered as. All right, so go forward with kindness. Um, my good wishes for everyone celebrating today, whether you're celebrate, celebrating Passover or Good Friday and Easter. So namaste, stay home, and stay well. Bye, everyone.